Hello everyone, Aloy here with another update. Since the release of SQL UI, I have been getting a number of feedback and uh, contribution as well, which is great. So thank you very much uh, if you have contributed. And we are getting close to the point where I can create a, a release from it, basically, that you can just import into your project and uh, depend on it. But before that, before we get to that point, I still have a couple of things that I want to add to it to make it a good foundation for the future. One of the things that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks is the theming of everything inside SQL UI. And not just everything that's currently in, but everything that uh, you or anybody who is using it would implement. So the theming is a way to extract the hard-coded styling of uh, the, the widgets and to something that's more dynamic. You, you could already add dynamic styling to your widgets, uh, dynamic as in interactive. So if you, if you hover over something, it would change color, maybe it's animated. But before, uh, these were two separate steps, two separate components that you had to attach to your widgets, and you had to do it at every place where you wanted to. This would not allow you to interactively, well, beyond interactively, change the way your elements are styled. I'm talking about, for instance, a checkbox. Checkbox is a good example because if you check it, uh, the styling changes. And in terms of HTML and CSS, the checkbox is going to be in a checked state. And currently, the checkbox just plain enables its check mark, you know. So it has a system that specifically changes the look of it based on the current value of it which is all right if you uh, don't plan to do anything um, more generic or beyond that, let's say. But that doesn't really work with everything. And to make a UI, not just for editor consumption, but also for games, uh, you have to control the styling in a more generalized manner. Now, instead of creating new systems and, you know, dealing with context-based styling for everything, uh, you know, one by one, Theming lets you define themes for your components, but not just for, for its default state, but any state that uh, it can be in. So for the checkbox that I mentioned, I'm going to create two styling for it, one where it's not checked and one where it's checked. And the scaffolding for all of this is already done. So I already created it. I didn't merge it yet to, to the main branch in, in SQL UI, but I'm going to once I am at the point where I cleaned up everything, you know, and also ported all of the existing widgets to use the new system. So what does theming look like in the new quote unquote version uh, of SQL UI? There are three components to theming. One is something that already exists. It's uh, the UI style command extension chain thing, uh, where you can just uh, grab your entity and apply styling to it. This is something that I have been using uh, throughout the uh, examples and everywhere to style the elements statically. And it works, it's good. However, uh, I had to overhaul this completely not change what it does or how it does it, it's just how the actual extensions are generated because all of it was generated by a macro, but in a, in a fragmented manner. So now I have centralized it and I have a large macro that generates like uh, 15,000 lines of code, which is not something I would write or recommend writing uh, by hand. So that's the first thing, uh, something that can apply styling to entities. The other uh, layer on top of this is what was previously the two components that you would attach to your, I don't know, your tab, for instance. If you look at the tab, this one has the interactive background and the animator interaction or the background, which means that when I hover over it, it will, you know, change colors. There is also a component that holds the state uh, for those two things. So it's actually quite complicated to add the interactivity feedback uh, for, for something like this. This will be changed uh, and I'm going to drop support for the individual animated interaction things because it makes no sense. Uh, there, is a, there is a new uh, way to do all this in a centralized manner and uh, it's called the dynamic style. The dynamic style can be 
three things basically one one is that that it's not really dynamic it's a static style basically a style that you apply only once then there is another type of dynamic style which is interactive um it's what was previously just the interactive something interactive background interactive border color basically it does not allow you to animate it reacts to the change in the interaction so it, this one for instance this black square has the interactive um, border so when i hover over it changes the color and then the third type is the animated ones which lets you animate uh, the properties that support animation basically anything that has a, a value type that can be um, interpolated in this case colors for instance as you can see if i hover over it it go it turns into this golden color if i press it it becomes green if i cancel it go, becomes red and then goes back to blue there is a little delay um that i have added uh, when you remove the uh, the, the pointer but that's, that's just for testing basically and uh, these are the types of dynamic styles that you can apply to components this works without the theming so this is um, something that uh, is a drop-in well not drop-in but it's a replacement for uh, the previous uh, combination of uh, components that you had to attach to to uh, you know have the same result of of your interaction and theming comes on top so uh, theming is basically a way to apply a dynamic style to your component based on where your component is in the chain of, of or the tree of widgets and what pseudo state is it currently in. So basically there are three types of uh, theming approaches that I've implemented. One is that you pre-generate the dynamic style basically that should be applied in the context. Another method is something that generates the, the dynamic style on the fly when it's needed based on something I call the theme data. This is something that uh, needs a function, a callback basically that generates the dynamic style on the fly when it's needed or when the theme data changed. And the third version is uh, a completely open one where you give a callback that receives the word. So you can find your own things and uh, style accordingly. And now that I have talked so much about uh, how the theme is put together, let me show you how the code looks like. So I have the theme text box, which is the squares that you have seen. Well, two of them were the theme text box. The third one was just a big button. I will get back to that later. But for now, what you need to see here is that uh, this function returns with a theme for the test box. And this is a component that you can attach to something. In the case of the example, I'm attaching the base theme to the root object. So every test box that's in the widget tree in the example will fall back to this particular theme. And I have an override one, which I add to the second box in, in this case. Um, but anything below that will use this uh, theme instead of uh, the, the base one. Well, a combination of the two. Theming works similarly to HTML, um, CSS. So you have a base set of rules that is the topmost uh, theme in the hierarchy and everything below that will override parts of it. If you want to completely override uh, something, you have to you know, define that override and then everything below the widget tree of that theme will use that. And uh, on top of the base ones, you see the none here, which, which is basically when you have no pseudo state. On top of that, you can build specific things, specific overrides for uh, when the, the widget is in a, in a certain state. In this case, I called it a check style. So when the checked pseudo state is attached, I change the background color to gray. And this will also override the uh, both boxes actually, because uh, the override theme does not define the pseudo state for that one so does it, it it doesn't override the style it, so the fallback will be used anyway uh, you see the two styles here already so the first one is uh, basically just build uh, build it right now and uh, this will receive a style builder there which is quite similar to the ui style uh, that that existed so far in sql ui in in the sense that you can call functions on it so um border 
give it a border, it will set the border to that. Uh, background color, width, height, this is pretty simple. But this one, the style builder actually has two more um, extensions. One is the, uh, the, the interactive, interactive style builder, basically, which lets you build the styling for things that are only interactive, but not animated. So this is what half of the things that existed before. But in this case, all of the properties that can be styled are supported. Well, most of them that can be meaningfully styled in an interactive context. In this case, I have a border color, which is, again, it needs a bundle. Uh, so it needs a bundle of uh, colors to tell what the base color is. And in this case, the hover will be changed based on the interaction that's currently received by the element. And that's it. Uh, this will build uh, the pseudo theme that uh, I'm using to create the actual theme for the, the test boxes. And the check style is similar. It's uh, it's built right now. And uh, in this case, yeah, I'm just overriding the, the background color. Now, uh, onto the second type of theming is when we are using a builder uh, that is being called every time the theme is updated. In this case, we create a deferred uh, pseudo theme and I'm passing it a function. As you can see, it's, it's the basic theme for everything below the override uh, node. And when the theming is applied or when the theme data is changed, this function will be called and the dynamic style that this generates will be applied to everything that's uh, receiving the override from this. And in this case, uh, you can see I'm just overriding the color uh, of the border with a static color. So it's no longer interactive. And I'm uh, creating an animated background color. And in this case, the base, so the non-interacted color is coming from the theme data. Currently, the, the only thing that the theme data has is the background color, but that's going to change. In any case, uh, we have some static colors here and the base background color. So when the theme data changes uh, uh, and the background color changes, the elements that use this override theme will have a different background color. And you can see the, the animations uh, applied here as well. So that's that. And let's see the, the, the systems that run on those two boxes just to, to see the whole picture. So the first one is uh, the thing that changes the theme data. As you can see, it's a resource. And uh, the only thing we do is change it to blue or crimson based on what's the current color is. So it's just toggling between the two uh, colors. And this is a different uh, component. So it's not the text box, it's a toggle. And the other system that we have is basically the one that adds the pseudo state when we click on uh, one of those boxes. So if it has one a pseudo state, it will be removed. If it doesn't have one, it will get the checked one. Normally, this is something that you apply based on your um, logic. So checked and not checked is something that a, a checkbox would, would use. Uh, but even the pseudo state has a custom entry. So if it's not something that's predefined, you can define your own, just give it a name. And this goes for everything. Again, if you want to style something that's currently not stylable, you can give it a callback and do the styling based on that. So if you want to animate a material property, you can do it by adding a, a, the custom um, animated one. So the builders support the custom ones, actually. So let's have a look at how they are uh, injected into the widget tree. So first of all, we have the root container here, which will have the base theme. And if we go down the widget tree, here is the lab container that we see there, uh, which will spawn one of the boxes. This will be the, the leftmost, the black square. Then we spawn another one with the override theme. And then we spawn the button. This one doesn't have a theming uh, applied. It just has the static theme that will not change normally by itself. And if you look at how it works, so here is the, the black one, which has the base theme. And if I click it, it will change uh, to have a pseudo state. If I ch click it again, it will not have uh, the pseudo state. And if you look at the second one, uh, it has the uh, the theme, so the override theme, which will change its, its uh, 
um, colors based on the interaction. And if I click that, as you can see, it now went gray. The reason it's, it's going gray is because we have the pseudo state, uh, which again up here defined a simple background color that is not uh, or no longer animated. But if I click it again, it goes back to the previous uh, theme that it, that, uh, that it had. And uh, if uh, I use this button uh, to change the theme data, the middle box changes uh, the base color of it. This is because we regenerated the, the whole dynamic style when the theme data changed from the click. And if I click it again, it will just go back to the other one. And that's it, basically. That's that's all it has to do. And um, I know it sounds simple and it looks simple, but a lot of considerations has to go into and a lot of code needs to be generated because no way I'm writing this again, uh, 15, 14, 15,000 lines of code by hand. That's just not uh, feasible. Anyway, I'm going to continue porting all of the existing widgets to use uh, the new approach and I hope to see you next time as well. Until then, have fun. Ciao, ciao.